Squatch Senior back on the Super M project. Project's finally starting to wind down. Got two uh, assemblies to go through here yet. I got the reservoir and hydraulic lift all unit with the auxiliary valve for two way cylinder operation and the carburetor left to do. Today I'm going to get into the lift all. One of the main reasons for that, they welded this on. This thing's been spewing oil all over. I'm assuming the seal is bad in there, so we got to get that fixed. You notice too, got a lot of galvanized fittings on this thing. Got some there, got some over here on the fill. I'm going to convert a lot of that stuff over to hydraulic fittings where I can clamp this auxiliary valve easily onto there. One thing you got to make sure with the auxiliary valve, you have clearance for the suction hose off the reservoir right here so and from what I can see looks like we should uh, have plenty of clearance in there I don't think we'll have an issue with that just with them two fittings I will be replacing all these galvanized with hydraulic fittings or black pipe so okay let's get into this we'll start ripping this down and uh, see what kind of problems we can find in here I've got all the galvanized fittings off loose or whatever uh, all the bolts are out except for two. I left two in. I've got a dead blow hammer here. First thing I'm going to do is see if I can loosen this gasket on this cover. Okay, come out pretty good. Now you got there's a piece in here on here that engages into that you got to kind of lift and wiggle it out of there okay got it now here's the unit got it sitting in the pan because it is dripping oil all over here you can see the pressure side that goes in here. This is all the hydraulic actuating controls here. And to get this off, you'll see on this lever here that I got to take off, there is a piece down in there on that actuating lever that has to engage right in here with this piece right here. And that's where the issue is getting this off. Uh, getting it off is usually the easy part. A lot of times putting it on, that's where you run into issues. So anyway, it should come off pretty good. Uh, next up, we'll be probably taking this pinch mold out in here. Slide that off. We'll see what the seal is like. Recheck the weld, see if it's adequate to hold, and get that fixed up. The rest of this has been working good, so we'll just tear it down anyway as long as we're this far and make sure everything is working okay. Before I tear this down, we'll kind of go into the operation of this system here. This is the lift lever that goes into here that we just took it out of. And what that does to apply pressure to your cylinder, it pulls back on this and applies pressure to your cylinder. Now, these are designed back in here. It's kind of hard to see. We'll get a light on her maybe. You can see a little step in there. What that does is when you lift, you can lock this in to the lift position. Okay, once it's in the lift position, you don't have to handle the lever anymore. It will automatically lift your attachment when the cylinder bottoms out. The pressure builds in this system. This pop-off valve here will come out. It will release that lever. Put you back to neutral so works good for cultivator sickle mower whatever you can just pull a lever uh, let the hydraulic unit do its job and you can concentrate on your uh, turning around or whatever you're up to a lot of times what these do is this gets rounded off in here this is pretty much identical to the belly pump system too you have to re-square that up make sure all the rounded corners off to get that working again and you can get these back into service so anyway we'll get this tore apart uh, first thing we gotta do a bunch of pins over here to take out get this top all this top stuff out of here and then start taking the bolts out 
Okay, I've got the, uh, all the accessories off the top. Got the relief valve out. Got to be careful when you take this apart. There's a spring in there. A sleeve. And a check ball. So, just make sure you know which way they go back together. Don't lose any of them pieces. Very important piece. And you have these two little checks in here. And to take that apart, what I'm going to do is flip this upside down on top of a can. And hopefully everything stays in position. Okay, let's take things, see if we can get just a cover off. Okay. There we go there. And here's you make sure you get these in the proper place. So best thing to do, take a picture if you don't have a manual. I do have the manual. Uh, pretty self-explanatory looking where they go, so we'll pop them out of there next. I'm going to keep all these pieces together. We'll set them on the back of the bench. Here's the check ball in that one. Here's a spring. This one's got a smaller check. in the piston. Set them back here all together. And take this piece off. And you'll notice these different pistons. One's got a little end on it, the other one don't. But that little end does. It goes into this piece and releases that check valve. So we'll take them out. We'll put them with the appropriate springs and check valves and that's the total disassembly of the control unit next up we'll get that uh, shaft out of there and see what kind of a seal and stuff we got in that case got the clamp bolt loose and we'll finish getting that out of there next up there's a key in there let's see if we can get that fished out of there Could be easier said than done. There we go. In the bottom with the oil. And what they call the key is actually a thick washer that the clamp bolt goes through. So this should pull right apart now, hopefully. Okay, just like that. And all they have for a seal is an O ring. So that'll be a very easy fix. I'll double check, make sure this weld is good. Put a new uh, O-ring on here. Uh, clean everything up. Got a bunch of residual in the bottom. A bunch, bunch of residual oil down there. So we'll get that draining overnight. Tomorrow we get into cleaning this thing up and getting her back together. Don't look as bad as I envisioned in there. I don't think this unit had hardly ever been used. I know I've never used it. Because you can look at the catch here for the uh, lift. No wear or anything on it. Pretty nice and sharp yet. So actually, previous owners, uh, the one that had it before me, I know never used it. I'm not sure about the previous owner before him. But I've never used this. All I've used is auxiliary valve. So... This thing uh, actually is very nice shape inside. Okay, we've got everything cleaned up here. Got all the threads chased. All the uh, parts buffed down, ready for paint. Got my manual back here. Main reason I have that manual back there is to verify the check valves going to proper position in the housing here. Got a new seal on the control lever shaft and new seals on the high pressure tube that goes inside. Now these seals, basically O-rings, you can get at the parts store. If you do look for them for this unit, this is a 113 in a selection. 
and this is 213 for the high pressure tube. So, got my check valves all organized in the proper parts that go to each one. Like I say, bolts all buffed and threads chased, and everything ready to put together here. So, you see, I did also make a little stand to put this together, keep all the check valves in place. All I did is take some six inch long stove bolts or carriage bolts, put some nuts on them, adjust them so I can get my plungers in first. Then I can put this piece on, then I'll slide the check valves inside. After the check valves are installed, I will put this piece on, start some of the bolts up through until I get her snug down. Then I can flip it over without losing the check valves again. So let's get going. I'm going to start putting this together. Verified with my manual here. Which pin goes where, which check valve goes where. And we'll do the top one here first. And I have a little pan of oil here. And I'll put a little bit of oil on the shafts of these. Slide them in there. And the piston in there. You'll notice it's a little shorter to the pinhole here than this way. The short end goes in first. That you can, and then make sure that this cross pinhole, there's a slot in here that the shaft goes through to move this. So make sure that's in line too. We'll give that a little coat of oil. You don't need much, just a little film. Make sure my pin's lined up, the pinhole. Get that in there. Next up, this piece, get all the bolts lined up, and then we'll get the check valves in position. This goes in first onto this hole. Next goes the ball. And the spring, small end in first. Okay, the next one. The ball. The spring. And the spring guide. Okay, next up we'll put the top on. Now when this goes on, you make sure the spring and the spring guide are inside these no doubt uh, portions of this cover that way you don't pinch them together we we'll probably have to get down and make sure the alignment's right okay everything's sitting nice and flat i see no air gaps so it verifies that uh, i'm down where it's supposed to be We'll get a couple bolts started here. Trying to get everything locked together before we flip it over. Okay, everything there is finger tight. And get her flipped. Everything holds in position really good. And get our stand bolts out of the way. And we will finish putting the rest of the bolts in. We'll get this tightened down. Okay, got the cover all tightened down. Ready to put the cam and piston lever in. First off, going to make sure the check valves are all free and working good. Good spring tension. Don't feel no bind. Next up is... Here, make sure this piece is on both these plungers. Get her lined up. That's kind of a trick. This got a pretty heavy spring. There is a piece here that one end fits in, the other just rests against there. And we got this long pin that goes all the way through. First part is pretty easy. But then we get into getting it lined up into this piece could be sometimes quite a trick. There we go. 
Okay, cutter pin goes in there. A few more pieces put on here before we get to that point. Next up, we'll get the pin in through the cam and piston valve lever and in through the piston. That's where you got to make sure the hole in the piston is lined up so this pin can go all the way through. Got a washer on this side and a washer on this side with a cotter pin again. Next up, we'll get the relief valve put in. Here is the seat for it. And what that does, put a gasket in, put the seat in, and the ball goes on top of that. Now the rest of this, you have a washer to come out of here. What that does is probably tensions up the spring. You can adjust your pop-off pressures by adding or subtracting springs in here underneath the, the washers in underneath the spring. Put the spring in. This here goes in this way. And this whole works goes into there. Uh, pretty stiff spring. It could be a challenge. We'll see if we can get her done. bad there she goes we'll get that tightened down and get on with the rest of the project here next up we'll get the locking clip in we'll make sure the pressure relief valve cap is on there we have this spring that goes in here hits on the end of here and then the pin goes through here get that in position there and cotter pin in there. Next up, we'll do the high pressure tube. Got some oil put on the O ring already. We'll just get that put in position. Gradually work that O ring in. We don't want to scuff it. Give her a little turn. There she goes, just like that. Next up, we'll get the control lever on. It's pretty straightforward here. A uh, little oil on the O-ring, slide her in. Once you get it in there, you get the lever on, and you'll see a keyway there. And what they use for a key is a heavy flat washer that goes in between seats in the key slot. And then the bolt will go through and pinch the whole works together. So let's get that installed. Probably won't show that one on camera. It's pretty straightforward. Next up is to get the control unit onto the reservoir. Now I do make my own gaskets. Got that all punched out, ready to go. And to get that unit on, I have to you see the piece right here on the control rod. That has got to go into this slot right here. So when you put that in, you got to kind of tip it in and get it all lined up. And then the next thing is the pressure tube. That has got to seat into that area down there. So this can be quite a trick to get installed. So we'll get set up and I'll put some sealer on that gasket we don't use much just real light coatings all you need you don't want to squeeze a lot of excess into that reservoir so I'll get set up and uh, see if we can get that cover on I'm gonna squatch 253 here uh, he's gonna see if he can get that piece in for me a little more than I can handle thing is heavy I'm not sure I can handle it <clears throat> Yeah, we'll see if we can get this piece put in there. It was entirely by feel of that thing. I'm on the pin, I just can't get it. Feels like I'm in. Just about got to do that by braille. Yep. Well, 
it's in there. I uh, hope everything got in position right. We'll, we'll do a flashlight check and make sure uh, that tube is in there. Well, there we go. Everything put together. Seems to be working good. The catch is working. You can pull it back. Catches, holds. Looked in through the suction side. The high pressure tube is seated in both areas where that needs to be. Uh, still have some plugs to get. I got this is a pressure side of the pump. Got two outlets here, one there. All I'm going to do there now, I'm just going to put plugs in. For now, um, I'm going to switch all this galvanized stuff over to black pipe. Here we got uh, the fill, mounting holes. I've got the pressure side from the pump, suction to the pump. Now remember guys, this lift all unit is an engine driven pump. So yeah, very similar to the belly pump in the way operation. Uh, uses a lot of the same parts inside. So that should uh, give me a pretty upstanding unit. That should finish the uh, overhaul of this. Uh, everything looks good. Resealed, cleaned, a lot of sludge in places. So should work good.